They say that the D minor is the most depressed chord, the darkest chord. Really? Of all the chords, yeah, because today on the quarter cast, we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be talking about the Google Graveyard. It's actually <laughs> Graveyard by Google. It's its own product. But <laughs> it, okay, if you could guess, how many products do you think Google has killed over time? Is it like 30, 5, 500? Like, what scale of product? That's the thing. Like, a product as in it's been, like, adopted by a million people and, like, heavily marketed and, like, is a I'd say a product is something that they have rolled out with the intention of people using it. It's mm. got branding behind it. It's got uh, a finished sort of execution behind it. Um, yeah, maybe some patents. I, don't, I have no idea how many patents Google holds, but... Yeah, that's what I would consider be some a product, people, you know? They, they sat down at Google. They were paid by Google or one of its subsidiaries. And those people said, hey, this should be a product. Mm -hmm. I would guess. And they, and they, and they made it. I'm going to guess like 25. Really? Yeah. I, wow. Interesting. I don't know how many products have died but I have a feeling it's in the hundreds. Well, here's the thing. In terms of like big products that we recognize, I'm gonna say like 25. I'm sure there's Let's like, say, yeah. From a corporate standpoint, I bet you there's like thousands. <laughs> uh oh. Hmm. All right. Well, in the meantime, Ren, this song's for you. Is it? Wise men say <laughs> Only fools rush in <laughs> But I can help Falling in love with you <laughs> I'm glad you targeted this specifically at me, Jake. <laughs> you're, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> I thought you would enjoy it the most. I was enthralled. Okay, good. But despite the distraction of a tech problem going on, apparently, um, no solution yet. <clears throat> Is it the cloud lifter? Now it's up. Check. Hi, check. Hello. Yeah, you just had to tap it. That was that was the thing. <laughs> I'm just gonna tap the everything if it doesn't tap work. Method, just like right. hey. <clears throat> no, we're, we 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 don't cut anymore, guys. What you just saw is a real moment. That's how sometimes technology works. Um, sometimes it janks out on you, but all it needs is a little tap. Sometimes you just gotta you know <laughs> encourage Dobie to, to to get out of there. You gotta shush him out. Mm. Get yeah. Out of your so we're talking about Google products. We're talking about how many they've killed over time. Jordan, what say you? How many Google products do you think that Google has killed over time? I'm gonna say eighteen thousand six hundred and fourteen. Whoa! <laughs> eighteen thousand. Okay, I know it's less than that. <laughs> Good Dude, I'm just gonna say a lot of people fail with their business plans. That's like that. That's more days. If you release a product a day, that is way more days than the company has existed yeah if the company has existed for 25 years that's like approximately two products a day every single day but there's some really no optimistic people off. out there that are making some crazy businesses and they're failing dude what about when the products start making their own products that's when you can start seeing those numbers. Oh, you products mean like Apple making <laughs> products all right well I'm, I'm actually to... curious uh so before you give that answer, I'm wondering yeah. if maybe we should give an example of what we think is the most, give, uh, all four of us, we should give one example of a product that we know of from Google that has failed. Okay. I'll start sure. with the easiest one, Google Plus. <laughs> oh, I, th I didn't think you were gonna say that. I thought you were gonna say something else. Remember yeah, when Google, Google was like, hey, we should have a social media platform too, Google Plus. Remember when they mandated that you couldn't have a YouTube account unless you had a Google Plus account? There was oh, like yeah. a few years there where you couldn't make a YouTube account. You could only make a Google Plus account. Yeah. Hey, is it too early in this podcast to go on a quick rant? 
Uh oh. No, it's never too early. It's never too <laughs> early right. in the corridor cast to go on a rant. What the heck is like multi-billion dollar companies just making copies of other things that already exist to try to do it better? Stop that. Stop crushing the people that are doing cool, innovative things. Go out there and make your own new idea. Stop just yeah. duplicating what somebody else did, crushing the them. competition, and then yeah. crapping the bed and killing the thing that you made shortly afterwards, thereby killing both versions. Yeah. Stop it. If you have billions of dollars, yeah. go do something new that hasn't been done yet rather than doing something else that someone else already did just because you want to steal their users. Okay, I'm done. Since the beginning Please. of time. Are, is there anything specific you're referring to here? I was actually scrolling through this list of things Google killed and just like, Thing after thing after thing is Google trying to launch something to be a competitor with someone something that's already there, it not getting adopted. Then Google's going eh and killing it. Like there is like a bunch of like you know like next door like the thing for neighbors you know like where you can like it's a social media yeah. for neighbors. They yeah. have like five versions of that. It's like clearly they're trying to eat some of next door's lunch and get into that space <laughs> so they can do stuff. And of course every single one of them is dead. Like Google killed each one. But like it goes on from there with like various like other cool features or apps or things that like. Or somebody else is already doing it and has an audience and Google trying to replicate it, which is very similar to the model of Microsoft in the year from the year 2000 to 2010. Microsoft was doing the exact same thing with their Zunes and their Windows phones I had a Zoom. and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, the it. Xbox was like the first of that big step, you know? Oh, yeah, um, yeah. Fair play. So it's like, stop just spending money to do what somebody else is already doing. And, like, why don't you try to fix some problems or things that need fixing rather than just doubling up on something that somebody else has already put in the time and money on it? Hey, All right. This is a video salty idea. take, Nico. We take someone whose idea got stolen and we revive it. <laughs> and that's a video right there. Wait, we here's an a- idea. Here's an idea. We take some of Corridor Digital's work and then we post it on TikTok. <laughs> oh, you mean Ren's render that's just going crazy all over the place? Have you heard about yeah. any of that, Jake? The My TikTok? Yeah. I, last I heard, it had 80 million views on TikTok. It's, it's probably going to cross 100 million before the end of the day. <laughs> Dude, is this a Gangnam style of TikTok? I mean, I don't know. I, I, I'm i talking with people, and they're like, oh, yeah, no, that kind of happens. Like but like, also not at the same time. Like, this sort of thing only happens on the entire platform once a week. Mm. Huh. Nice. So you got to be the person of the week. That's awesome. I mean, I mean, maybe. Again, I know so little about TikTok. Again, I put this video up of the satisfying render on a whim. I just threw it up on TikTok and just because, uh, whatever, fine. Sure, sure. He, uh, I had friends who were heckling me to do it, and I was like, fine. Um, not expecting anything in return. And now, over the course of the last three days, I have gained 550,000 followers on TikTok, which is more <laughs> than all of my other followings combined. <laughs> Something that oh, I just did on a whim. Why not? Sure. Yeah. We kind of need to do something with that. I feel like it's <laughs> mandatory at this point. People don't even believe do it's him. Do? Yeah, if you're like, why don't you credit the original <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's so funny. It's like, I feel flattered because it's like, at least you're they're literally they're, they're the guy that they're like, made hey, it. hey, come on. Yeah. You, uh, show some respect to Corda. Don't steal their work. And it's like, obviously, they just don't know that it's me who uploaded the video. Yeah. Obviously. I mean, it's like our TikTok, too. People are like, our TikTok has gotten taken down like five times our a week. T- yeah, they the don't Corda believe it's TikTok. us. And I'm like, I don't know what else to do. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it, that's a little bit more confusing and, and frustrating. Um, huh, you think like, people are analyzing that account? <laughs> no, sorry. <laughs> Apparently, it is a lot of just human error. Anytime like a video gets taken down or whatnot, you can fight back and usually get it put back up. Yeah. I have a friend who works at a TikTok influencer uh, management company, I think, and th- she's currently helping us get stuff reinstated. So she helped us get the Corridor account reinstated yeah. over the weekend. Uh, hopefully we'll get us verified so that this doesn't happen again. Well, well you know, that's very they nice still her. never put up the Aaron versus the Colossal Titan because they labeled it as nudity. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, yeah. no one looks at Attack on Titan and like thinks... Oh, this is hot. Like, no one. <laughs> it's definitely, it's like, hot. <laughs> it's, it's definitely kind of playing on the idea that these sure. are naked people, but the fact that they're not kind of just goes over their heads at TikTok. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, that's got to be all algorithm stuff. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. I think someone tripped it and you can fight back, but it's someone intentionally doing it. Yeah. But it might be algorithm. I mean, for something like the Attack on Titan nudity thing. That seems a little bit more algorithmic. Yeah. Yeah. Well, because we, we uploaded three Attack on Titans, and mm-hmm. I feel like there has to be multiple submissions of someone being like, no, this is nudity, this is nudity, this is... I think it's like after a certain amount, they go ahead and take it down, and yeah. then a human analyzes it, 
And they're like, yeah, we reviewed it and we decided it's nudity. Right. Mm-hmm. I think that that's what happens. I have so many but quandaries we don't... and complications with TikTok in general. Yeah. I don't even <laughs> know where to begin. Yeah. Right. But well, let's let's not and let's stick to the, the topic at hand. Good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, we've got a very special sponsor today. It's Storyblocks once again. That's Storyblocks. So let me tell you all about them, kid. Storyblocks is your one-stop shop for all of your stock asset needs. They've got high quality 4K B-roll, audio images, music, After Effects, motion graphics, templates, and more. They're constantly updating their library, which is great if you need to put something in a video and you don't want to get that B-roll on your own. They have an unlimited all access plan. You can use it however you want, wherever you want, whenever you want. It's royalty free. It's another creative tool in our creative toolkit, and that's why we like it. So if you want to join me, head on over to storyblocks.com slash corridor cast. That's storyblocks.com slash corridor cast. We'll see you over there. Now back to the episode. Google okay, Wave. wait, wait, wait. I'm announcing Google, Google Wave Google. is my thing. Why Google don't you Wave. buy TikTok Whoa. and then kill it? Oh, they're Why already doing Google their do YouTube that? Shorts. They're already doing what I just explained. They're already launching their own version called YouTube Shorts, which is them just trying to do what TikTok has already done successfully, and they're not going to do it as true. well, and they'll kill they it in did. about two years. Or they won't, That's and it's going to cheapen the platform in general, turning it into a weird half TikTok, half YouTube. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Google Wave is my product that I loved, <laughs> and they killed it when I was in the process of using it, so... <laughs> Yeah. If you've okay, come remind, to the place for salty Nico is. tech takes, <laughs> you found it. Google Wave was uh, the precursor to Google Docs. It's basically it combined uh, Gmail, Discord, and Google Docs into one kind of cohesive platform. Basically, imagine a real time like forum or like Reddit thread where you, as people are writing, you can see the writing happening, just like on Google Docs, like it's real time writing. And you can do like comment threads within themselves, or have like one long email chain, basically where people are leaving posts up. But basically, just like a hyper dynamic and living communication document so like if you were say like we we're using it for productions we'd be like you know like okay locations and we have like a, a topic location scouts and at the top people are like you know here's what we're doing locations we need so maybe somebody makes a reply underneath that with questions maybe somebody answers those questions underneath and then you keep going in and you keep adjusting those comments there as you update with the things that you're finding so it's like you're updating cells in and of themselves with new information, but you're also creating like a, a message thread, almost like an email thread kind of thing going on. But it's also living within like topics as if it was on a forum. It's basically just Google going like, you know, what's a way we can have people communicate with each other? It's, it's the precursor to like the Slack, you know, the Slacks mm. of the world. And Slack, honestly, at this stage, is just Discord with a corporate friendly skin. Um, so, yeah, it was really nice. And we were le- like legitimately using it actively using it for like planning our videos and doing like productions and stuff like that and google's like oh we're done (laughs) (laughs) that was that so google wave later known as apache wave is a discounted software framework for real-time collaborating collaborative editing online Mm -hmm. wow (laughs) did you use it when it was apache wave nico or only when it was google so they bought it from apache then (laughs) (laughs) yeah that was it yeah, I don't know if they bought it from... Yeah, developers, Apache software. Yeah. They, they probably... I wonder if they bought Apache because they liked the real-time text stuff. Let's and they're like, we want to implement that in other things. Usually, I think that's what happens a lot of the time with yeah. big like corporate buyouts is like, they don't want the product. They just want some of the, the infrastructure the behind the product. And potentially patents. Like maybe yeah, they patented patents. Like the real-time typing. Because it's really cool in Google Docs and somebody's writing and you can see literally letter by letter mm-hmm. their writing Absolutely. appearing. Yeah. It is not. It was not bought by Google. Oh, really? Yeah, it's a. It's currently a small cap. Um, oh, they spun it off. organization, actually. They spun it off into a separate company. No, it was always a separate company. It's an American nonprofit corporation. Then what's it Google Wave? Number of. They must have Google bought. I think Google bought it from them. Here, let's find out. Let's find out more, guys. <laughs> 
Jake, we're live. <laughs> I know. We can't, we can't be sitting here just Googling. Yeah, <laughs> this, this is a podcast. Welcome to it's a podcast. <laughs> Jordan, do you have any companies that, or sorry, any products from Google that you might remember from back in the day? Mm, back in the day. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, we um, can look at that list. Do you, did you share that list somewhere, Jake? Yeah, it's on the oh, Discord. Oh, there's a list. <clears throat> yeah, did, here. You I'm can't sure. think of any products that Google killed? That Google has killed. Like <clears throat> Google right, well, Glass? I'll go, or... I'll go in the meantime. Yeah, you can go. Figures that out. Uh, or Pixel Google Books Glass, or... guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, Google Glass. Yeah. I mean, come on. The tried and true classic. Everyone thought it was going to be the new new. Everyone. I mean, thought did, that, oh. did people really think that was going to be like the new new thing? Some people I did. did. Some people thought that was going to be the thing. And then, yeah. and then I remember Brandon got a pair. It wasn't Brandon. It was one of his employees. Okay. So, yeah. Because that was the one I tried was, was the one over there. Yeah. Was it Kevin? And, Im- and immediately... Maybe you realized it was not going to be the next new thing. <laughs> but well, here's the thing. It's like, I, I still actually believe Google Glass was just ahead of its time. You know, it's like, we're starting to see some of the functionality that they were dreaming up come into fruition today with like the Google, sorry, the Snap spectacles that mm-hmm. they got. And I imagine in another 10 years, you know, see-through displays that are built in the glasses are just going to be fairly regular. Perhaps still expensive and not common, but... You know, they won't be rare. I think the biggest realization that I had when donning both the Google Glass and the HoloLens was that the tech is super cool, but if you don't have any software worth running, then the tech is immediately useless. And Google Glass was kind of that thing where it's like, Google Glass in theory theory is really cool. Like Mm -hmm. having a heads-up display that tells you cool things happening in your life, and you suddenly realize that like, oh, interfacing with it is really hard. And it really can't do very much. And it really just tell me the time and the weather. I don't really want to wear something for that. You know, <laughs> yeah. it'd be cool if I could like analyze what I'm looking at and like, or you know, like, people, like an example people give is like, oh, you're a tourist. You're in France. You're looking at the Eiffel Tower. You hold up your phone and it highlights different things and tells you about them. That would be rad. Somebody needs to go make the software. You know, it's like, it's not a hardware thing. It's a software thing. Like the hardware is almost trivial. It's, it's putting all the, the work into the software. It's like hard or like. Another great example is, you know, how great would it be if when you buy your furniture from Ikea, instead of having a paper manual, you whip out your phone and you point it at the things and it just shows you, here's the box, here's where that screw goes here and it draws lines and it, you know, literally like paints it in front of you as you're pointing it at the objects. That would be awesome. Nico, they give you a piece of paper (laughs) that's a lot cheaper that you can just find. Exactly. It's the (laughs) software that that matters. They're the worst. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. It's the same thing with VR headsets right now. Like. The Quest 2 is an amazing headset, but if you don't have good games worth running on it, like, who cares if you have a great VR headset? You need to have cool software. I mean, I think that's a big reason why iPhones started exploding after the App Store was released, you know? Mm -hmm. It was like, once you actually have this open API for everyone to develop for, and and you can consume different types of programs on it, it it explodes. It's the main... Isn't that the main reason why... uh, No, it's, it's a slightly different reason. I was thinking why Microsoft started exploding back in the 80s and 90s and just completely overtook Apple, but that was because... Microsoft was more of a uh, an operating system company. Yeah, they got in. They got in all the all the PCs. That's they didn't. Yeah. They didn't limit limit DOS and Windows to just one hardware brand, which is what Apple was doing. Yeah. Hey, uh, do you guys think Apple is justified in taking thirty percent of everything going through the App Store, and also justified in not letting you install any other software unless it goes to the App Store? I mean, those are two again, questions. First I'm, off, <laughs> I'm conflicted about that. I I don't think I don't think they should. But if you're asking me, like, can they? You know, <laughs> no, then, I didn't ask like, you. Can obvious, they? obviously I, they course, can, and, and I can there's do, nothing. I can do anything I want. Wrong about I could it. kick out that window. I could break that light. But <laughs> no, should I? Know, I? But I'm, I'm saying <laughs> I'm not. I'm I'm saying it's not illegal. Obviously. I, well, yeah, but should they? Who? Nobody cares if the answer is to can they. We all care what the answer is to should they. Well, okay, I, I think it's it's kind of complicated because I think we actually talked about this recently about the whole Epic we did. Uh, Apple thing. Yeah, but like we touched on it. Thirty percent is already pretty steep, but you know what? Fine, it's it's this whole platform. Fine, yeah, it's a little bit monopolistic because they've got a you know, billions of devices out there and they do can you, only use this one store. Do you think but, basing the cut on percentage, which is an arbitrary number versus an actual cost is kind of So BS? that's where I'm getting. It's like, <laughs> it, or if we're talking like just straight up sales through the app store, you know what, fine. You want to keep it that simple, fine. But I think there should be an asterisk there, like any sort of follow-up. Like, I don't know. I guess then everyone would just do the asterisk version of it. Like uh, if if they perhaps didn't take as big of a share for, for what do you call like the the 
things you pay for inside of the the apps, mm-hmm. the yeah. in game purchases or whatever. Which is what app or sorry, which is what Epic was trying to do. It's like, hey, you can get the in internal game money stuff if you just buy it through your webs our website. It'll still apply to your account, but you don't pay Apple as much. Mm-hmm. Then everyone will just do that, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, it's um. There's definitely a monopoly concern there because you know it's basically android and them and android is everyone else and Mm -hmm. and them and so i think given like their market share you know there's definitely concern about monopolizing which you know has a greater impact on on individuals than just say if they were a smaller thing and they and they had their own ecosystem and you know they they weren't really capable of existing at the scale that could push other people out and say, mm-hmm. hey, if you're not on iOS, your product isn't going to survive. That's a concern now for applications. You know, um, you can't just be on Android. Like it's it's not possible. Um, yeah. So I think given that the scale of their enterprise has reached that level, you know, there's definitely it changes the conversation. I think than if it was just another player in a in a in a sea of of you know possible distribution platforms. Yeah, I think if I mean if you could. If you could use a different store on that on your iPhone, then Apple could charge. I'd say Apple could charge whatever percentage they want to, but you can't use a different store on your phone. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. on Steam takes. I don't know what it's like twenty percent, thirty percent. I think it's somewhere around there. Thirty. You can use yeah. yeah. You can use good old games. You can use Epic. You can use other game launchers. You don't have to use Steam, so they can charge whatever they want. But when you like, if that's the only one you can use, and you aren't yeah. allowed to use any others, it starts to get real yeah. dicey. Yeah, and it's like, I, I have a problem with that. But also, the, to, to your second question about should you be allowed to install apps from third-party stuff, it's like, I feel like that is a little bit more complicated because then that opens the door to, to you know, viruses and stuff like that. Every, I like the fact that I cannot install anything on my iPhone that I can't get through the store, so mm-hmm. that way mm-hmm. I know every single app that's on my phone has already been vetted. And they probably say you can install whatever you want on your iPhone. You just have to remove iOS. Yeah, or or jailbreak it. You know, that's <laughs> yeah. the actual other option that I have done before, and it works. And then you actually do have access to all these other tools. You can basically emulate Android. You can't tell me and that's not against their terms of service, though. Uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's probably it right. One hundred percent. Yeah, but, but I don't know. Like, I don't know somehow. how well they can police it. I guess that's what I, where my head was going. It's like you you probably can't update your phone anymore. But you know, whatever, it still works. Mm. You, I mean, I don't. Yeah. Do you know those following apps that you could download and see if like who's unfollowing you and all of that? I've never. Used yeah, those. so you can download an app and it literally puts all of your Instagram stuff in there and it can show you how many people unfollowed you, who unfollowed you, who mm. has you blocked, all of that. Right, and I had okay. a friend who just downloaded one of those apps and it immediately hacked her Instagram and like, took it over. Oh, wow. and okay, it was so through, that's slightly different. Yeah. That's like within this whole uh, <laughs> operating system. She probably gave it her username and password, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> immediately oh, yeah. freaked out. Because <laughs> like when you when you agree to like they actually tell you, all right, this is what we're gonna have access to, and you have to literally hit okay. And so that's why it frustrates me sometimes whenever I'm trying to like, I I forget what, but like say, allow YouTube to be signed in on my my TV or something like that, mm-hmm. and it's like we want to be able to look at all of your video search history and we mm. want to be able to post things on your behalf. And I'm like, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> it's like, like then no YouTube on your TV. <laughs> yeah. And this, that is the actual answer, but it's just the way it's phrased that way. Like they need that sort of access to be able to activate like one small feature. Yeah. The YouTube on a TV thing is a bad example, but you Which know, it's honestly a kind of a crappy system. It's either get more specific with your wording or, you know, hold developers accountable. If you are policing your platform to not be able to just be like, oh, I'm lazy. I'm just going to have every single checkbox come up uh full access to all your stuff and root access to drive school just you i don't mean, want to like, bother TikTok? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah the amount of access we just give away for free is oh yeah creepy especially like the jargon mm-hmm. that's like popping up i'm like um, blah, 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 blah. okay yeah <laughs> take my 99 cents sounds great <laughs> <laughs> yeah so here's so, another uh google yeah. product that was killed nico tilt brush oh that's right yeah, WTF, Ooh. Google. But, okay, I do think <laughs> Tilt Brush is still a thing. Google. You know, yeah. it's not like they just removed it from the internet entirely. I do think you can still get access to Tilt Brush. I'm not exactly sure how. They like, gave it to somebody or open-sourced it or something Maybe, like Yeah, that. maybe it's free now. So actually, maybe it's better. <laughs> well, it was always free. 
But it was 20 bucks. No. I'm pretty sure it was always free. Uh, I remember not getting it because I didn't want to pay 20 bucks for it. (laughs) Well, then it was shortly free thereafter when nobody bought it. Maybe it's free now that Google's (laughs) killed it. (laughs) Also, Google Cardboard. Yeah, well, there you have it. Well, that was kind of a that was kind of a gag to begin with. I mean, kind of YouTube messages. It was never like fully serious, but oh, they killed YouTube for Nintendo 3DS. (laughs) Here's one. Here's one. Did you guys ever use this one? Dodgeball. No. Dodgeball was a location-based social network where users texted their location to the service, and it notified them of friends and points of interest nearby. Hmm. Scary. I uh, think I remember this one. Snapchat did that. Here's too. one that we all actively okay. used. Hangouts. Yep. That's oh, right. Just, yeah. They just killed that like two yeah. months ago. Really? Hangouts. Google mm-hmm. Hangouts are not is, dead. It's weird because what Google, I feel like they're trying to do is they, they're trying to come up with their iMessage and their FaceTime. Like, what's our one brand name, like, messaging platform? What's our one brand name video platform? Currently, they're like, uh, Hangouts. Wait, no. Damn it. Uh, Duo. <laughs> oh, God dang it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, voice <laughs> the Me- messages messages uh, youtube messages yeah like, imagine imagine for a moment here if we change our channel name every year because we couldn't decide whether or not it was a good one <laughs> it's like no or we on, have guys. or we have we have eight channels that all make the same content just <laughs> slightly differently <laughs> oh that's another one google jump this mm. is one that most of you are probably going to be unfamiliar with but they basically developed this really intense, crazy system that converted a an array of GoPros into a single 360 image that was That's 3D right. no matter where you looked. Wow. And that is pretty crazy because I got really into trying to make like 360 3D uh, video over the last multiple times over the last several years. And you would you'd you can make 3D video by having two different lenses pointing straight forward. It's okay, put a couple GoPros together, 3D video. It's great. And people, what people started trying to do is they would put little pairs of GoPros looking this way, pair of GoPros looking this way, and then basically stitch it all together to make a 360 image. But it was never quite good. You'd be like, all right, it's pretty good this way, it's pretty good that way, but in between the two ways, your eyes are like kind of cross-eyed, and it's weird. So We used, we used Google Jump. Sorry, We did. Ahead. Yes, we did. Yeah. So basically imagine instead of having all these pairs that are looking in a general, in a specific parallel direction, Every single camera in a ring is pointed directly outwards from the center of that ring. So you have all these cameras that are basically going pointed this way, that way, that way, you know, like the hands of a clock. And what Google did was they basically would take, I think it was like 32 cameras. You would literally plug in the SD cards from all 32 yeah. cameras, offload yeah. all the footage onto the Google yeah. servers. They would process it for like two straight days and then send you a download link where you'd have the left and right eye perfectly set so that no matter which direction you looked it was always perfectly 3d in that direction wow. they and it was crazy over, they brought over a, a 3d printed gopro rig mm-hmm. that was a that was about i don't know maybe 18 inches uh, yeah a little smaller you know, than, it was like a medium pizza yeah <laughs> and uh this thing yeah you had you had each individual gopro faced vertically mm-hmm. directly um, outwards it, pointed directly yeah. outwards yeah, in a, in an array, and then all their cables running into the center. That, yeah, no, and, then, and it's actually a genius idea because what they're doing is they're basically pulling slices from each lens, each camera, for a specific view. So imagine you have this camera pointed that way, and then this camera pointed this way, but you're trying to look at this one piece over here. So this <clears> camera, you know, even though they're all pointed outwards... You can still get a 3D image from it by pulling this slice that's pointed that way and this slice that's pointed parallel. So, like, this camera over here is looking that way, and then that camera over there is also pointed <laughs> that way. I mean, is that and kind of able like to a basically video... synthesize a brand new image from all of those slices? Yeah, it was a really, really cool thing, and no one else has come close to doing it, and no one else can do it now. Mm. Isn't that like uh, basically a video version of a photo scan, effectively? No, no. It was. Uh, a photo scan is a little is is a very different process that involves like actual 3D geometry and whatnot. Uh, I think sounds like a jank Insta 360. Honestly, <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, you gotta see it to get it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. Part of it is that I think 360 video is overrated if mm-hmm. you're trying to consume it 
the way it's meant to be consumed. I love 360 cameras. Insta360 is an incredible company in my opinion. I love their cameras, but I rarely actually use what they give me. Uh, rather, I rarely use what the cameras give me for like, oh, 360 video, you can look anywhere. I can look behind me. Like, no one actually really wants to sit in a chair and like, oh wow, look, I'm, I can see video behind me yeah. with a VR headset. But 3D, on the other hand, I do think is critical to the future of media mm -hmm. because that depth information is a big deal. Um, we see it in video games and VR. We don't see it in, in, in video typically, unless you're at a 3D movie, which no one seems <laughs> to really want to do. You're making 3D, um, <laughs> like, what is that? Like in Times Square, headboard, uh, Billboards. Yeah, oh billboards. yeah, no, okay, so I know what you're talking about. That's yeah. not technically 3D, that's a perspective trick. Mm. Where they're like, all right, people are probably gonna be looking at this billboard from about this spot or yeah. so, so we're gonna render it out as if we're viewing it from this spot and we're gonna play with the space a little bit. Yeah. And it's an awesome illusion that actually works. It looks pretty really cool. cool. Like it was like a hand coming out and then there was one where they had a car crashing and the yeah. glass coming mm -hmm. out. But it was definitely like, okay, I have to be facing the car this way. Yeah. In order yeah. To it all get looks that. Weird I do more. really okay. like that. That's a little bit of like projection mapping kind of. I got another one. This is a big one, ladies and gentlemen. YouTube gaming. Oh, right. I remember oh going to like God. the YouTube gaming show after E3. I have some YouTube gaming socks, actually. <laughs> YouTube yeah. gaming lasted less time than my socks. I still have the socks and they don't have any holes in them. <laughs> and I wear there's them a, about once a month. There's a YouTube Whoa. gaming uh, coaster, I believe, in that room that you guys are in. Yeah, it's right by Christian, I believe. Wait, really? No, I remember seeing it. Maybe I upstairs in the uh, other office. Oh, yeah, it's upstairs. Office. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, that was a good one. Yeah, because Google Gaming, that was when, sorry, YouTube Gaming, that was when they were trying to compete with Twitch, right? Yeah. And now it's just, you can still stream on YouTube, but there's less of a marketed approach to it for gaming. Yeah. Yeah, it remember was those, specifically those... designed as a competitor to Twitch. Yeah, because, of course, they need to, if somebody else has been successful, they need to get in there and shove their way in. Right, <laughs> like, right. They need to bring other... their giant 800-pound gorilla body into a <laughs> tiny room. I mean, but all of the big guys do that. I know, but uh, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I wish the people at these companies would apply a little bit of like should we's to their questions of can we's. Well, have you ever watched Silicon Valley? Of course. Yeah. I love that show. Yeah. I mean, the, the guy <laughs> the guy that plays the head of Google is the epitome that they epitomize that in his role. It's it's a constant. Gavin he's Newsom. constantly just in. Yeah. Nelson. In, no. Ho, ho. <laughs> Gavin Newsom. I just said our <laughs> governor. <laughs> I'm sure Gavin, Gavin Newsom Gavin would like Belson. to be that guy. Belson. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's that's his character in a nutshell. There's another like aspect of killed Google things that I, I see happening little by little that makes me pretty wary. And they've killed a lot of things that made their search engine a better search engine, but made it so they were less able to control you. Because the, the better the search engine gets, the less they can direct your searches to the people that paid money for ads or the sites that they want you to see. So they used to have the ability to search forums, to search discussions. And yeah. in a internet that's like 99% bullshit and bots and copy pasted articles. Like, I don't know if you've ever tried to learn a really obscure 3d technique hmm. or like if you have a really strange bug in your 3d program and you're trying to search for a very specifically like phrased or worded thing in it. Like the first results that come up are usually the most generalized basic ass, like, Oh, like blender donut tutorial. And I'm searching like, how do I take these nerves and turn convert them to like four sided poly? You know, it's like, you go for something really technical and it gives you like the like layman's approach, uh, you know, for results. So like, you know, here's a times article about how 3d was using Marvel movies, like, which is made for like general audiences when they're just killing time and trying to like read away, you know, some minutes of the day on the internet. But in terms of like actually being a tool for knowledge, it stops being that. And the, the thing is, like, these days you get so much crap that's just people constantly copying and pasting articles to put on news sites because of the way how Google indexes pages. They need to be updated. They need to be current. So people literally just content farm where they're just going to grab an old article from someone else, copy it, paste it, change some words, call it a day, which means that your mm -hmm. information is constantly degrading. Like it's a lossy codec, you know, filming a video over and over off of a screen. Your information is constantly degrading and none of it's new information. It's just the same information being repeated. And so in order to get away from all that and like actually get some real discussions, some real words written by real people, I would always just search the Google discussions search because then you'd actually get somebody like giving like an honest review of a product. 
like, hey, this is the thing I have. I bought this bike. Here's what I like about it. Here's what I don't like about it. Versus some BS advertiser written PR release that's, you know, pin pasted on a thousand websites. And of course, yeah, but, they, they killed it. Is it like a Reddit? Nico, anything, any discussion. They let you search you any. Well, you could use other search engines, right? No one else had a discussion search like that. Oh. It's actually you, fully dead. You can't monetize that. You can't monetize it. That's right. Mm. Something that's actually you can't a useful tool. monetize it, you can't Google it. You know what they also <laughs> killed right away is their encrypted search. <laughs> yeah. Like, hey, here's an ability to search without being tracked. Oops, I'll get rid of that. <laughs> That's dead. Yeah, we, we can't sell that back to advertisers. So uh, can we just get rid of that? Oh, yeah. I didn't even realize they killed uh, the Google URL shortener. Yeah. That's another... Weird. That's another one. I was like, let's Weird. go and let's bully, you know, Bitly. Let's that, steal a bunch yep, of their user base, that was hurt their the company. Sh- URL shortener hype phase. And then we'll kill yeah. ours, thereby, yeah, you know... But- the Google URL shortener was almost 10 years old. Wow. It's super useful. Why kill it? Just let it sit. Let it be a thing. Do you think they sold it? No. No, like killed it. Killed it. Oh, yeah. Killed YouTube it. annotations. <laughs> yeah. 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 To well, be fair, they were still figuring out YouTube at the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We use an app for our security cameras here called Nest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's concerning to see that they killed that. Eight months ago. <laughs> oh, Jordan, can you explain? Can you explain the process of that service now to everybody how it works? Well, because oh you can't, you can't, uh, you can't talk to anybody, right? So we, <laughs> yeah, basically. So we have our security cameras, and we also have the way to get into the door. And now the the software still works perfectly fine. Like mm-hmm. I can go in and still add and take away numbers and people coming in, but there's no, there's no phone number. There's no one to talk to. There's no customer service. The, <laughs> yeah. All I can find is like Reddit conversations of like, yeah, they're gone. They're out. Like, I don't know where they went. So, what? I mean, we're still like, we, we're still rocking with them. <laughs> but I don't know how long, but then that's completely separate. That's wink. That's a whole nother one. So now that's there's, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's for the doors. And then we have, <laughs> Like security cameras that Google killed eight months ago. So I guess like, <laughs> there's no one to call for that either. Wait, Google Nest? Is, yeah. Google Nest is dead? The, yeah. Yeah, it said about eight months ago. <laughs> Wait, three months. barely even started. <laughs> yeah. Wait, though, that, I thought... Yeah, it said it was three years old. And then Nest they killed it. Nest Secure. Killed eight months ago. Nest Secure was a security system, system with a, an alarm keypad and monitor sensor with an embedded oh, microphone. It's that's Google Nest, Nest Secure. secure. Yeah, well, okay, that's different than Google more. Nest. Yeah. It's, it's, Works with Nest mm-hmm. API. I believe there is Google. I think Nest, Nest is still a thing. Nest is still alive. Nest Google is Nest still... Secure is dead. Oh, okay. oh so okay. but you know, every time I log in, it wants me to make a new thing through. Wants Google. you to make a Google Plus account. So that. <laughs> so I think it, it's connected somehow. Because every time I'm like, mm, not now, uh-huh. and I think. Panoramio is dead. Panoramio is my go-to for map paintings, where I just like so Panoramio is basically you go to a map. It was also it used to be also. Google Maps had image search on the map where uh, any geotagged images, you could search them. Oh, cool. Which is super useful. They killed it. I don't know why. Uh, <laughs> probably because it's too effective at getting you what you wanted. <laughs> and once again, they couldn't direct you towards where they wanted you to go. Um, so Panoramio is basically high quality like nature photos or basically like photos taken on locations, taken with GPS, similar okay. to the Google Map uh, search, except they were like all high quality photos, like, you know, really Dang. crisp, 1080p yeah. plus. So, like, if you want a picture of mountains for your map painting, you just go to a spot in, like, Switzerland, pull up Panoramio, and see what pictures have been tagged, and then you can find some great mountain pictures. Um, oh, my man. God. Yeah. I got a good one. That one's Yeah? Dead. What is it? Chromecast Audio. Oh, yeah. You guys may have never heard of this, but basically it's a, it's a hardware that plugs into basically any um, audio box that will connect to it, and then you connect to the Chromecast Audio piece of hardware like via bluetooth and you can play anything into that uh speaker system Hmm. without like any sort of additional applications or bluetooth or anything Um, yeah i think they probably realized uh that that hardware was probably going to go extinct very shortly and they're like yeah "Yeah, this is a lost cause (laughs) but then there's still just regular chromecast oh yeah no chromecast itself is still a thing Which I've, I've used the Chromecast for years. That's a, that works so well with the LG TVs. Just, mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you guys remember all those Chromebook uh, ads we did? Yeah. And oh, those yeah. those no longer exist either. <laughs> Wait, Chrome the Pixel bug. The, Chrome, the Chromebooks don't exist. Chromebook pixels are dead. They don't make. Oh. There are certain pixels that still exist. I think the Chromebooks. Yeah, but I think the Chromebook 
pixels are done. So like what you use? What There's do you Google use? Pixel what I have book. is a cr- I have a Chromebook Pixel upstairs. Uh, um, huh. Yeah, imagine paying $1,000 for a computer. Then two years later, the company just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> we're done. We're, like, oh. uh, yeah, we're, we're done here. I was hoping this was the hardware would last longer than two years, but you guys <laughs> apparently just uh, are done. So okay, another thing I used to use was Google News and Weather, and 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 uh, they had Google Play Newsstand as well. Mm-hmm. They got News rid stand. of all that and brought it into Google News. Um, so I guess I do that like was Google News though. Efficiency thing, but yeah, yeah. Consolidation, perhaps. How about Gmail? Uh, Google Mail inbox. Remember, so I have Gmail. I didn't. I don't remember. I don't even know what that is. Well, so I've been using Gmail for like ten years, right? Yeah longer than that now and google for a while has this thing like let's rearrange the ui it's like please stop <laughs> me and millions of other people are doing just fine <laughs> with how it is i don't like change <laughs> <laughs> well at a certain point when it's something as simple as email no i i'm, I'm agreeing. <laughs> you don't need to rearrange those five buttons to be in different spots it doesn't help me um yeah <laughs> so they came out with google inbox which is them trying to be like okay we're going to try to make it fancier so that like you know it's organized a little bit differently and then like messages that we think are more important are going to be organized to be on top and like you know things we highlighted and it's like yeah. Oof. so you're getting rid of just the simple chronological organization it's like yeah we're gonna have it be all smart and algorithmic it's like no thanks yeah no thanks <laughs> <laughs> just i need my emails to be in chronological order thank you very much <laughs> seriously though yeah Wait, okay maps or google maps just oh, one. google maps google maps yeah yep everyone is google maps here oh yeah 100 percent Jake? So Google Maps almost made me quit them when they started. Uh, they started bugging me about once a week to add my contacts to Google yeah. Maps. And I was like, if this happens yeah. for more than like two or three more weeks, I will uninstall Google Maps and never use it again. Hmm. Google Maps was asking you to add contacts. Yeah, I, I hate the idea that somebody else who I'm sure has me in their contacts list has added me like as I uploaded <laughs> their contacts to something. So it's like you know every company gets my phone number now with my name paired because some other person. I was like, whatever. <laughs> and then they share their yeah. contacts with, you know, Google, Google Maps Facebook. Google has never asked me to add uh, contacts. That's Probably because you're already sharing them because you're on an Android phone. How Ooh. dare you, Nico? I mean, that's oh, actually I true. I dare. But, like, legit, though. <laughs> I'm going to check right now. There's no way. Your, your contacts are 100% shared on Google Maps. You have an <clears> Android <throat> phone. <laughs> it's built into the system. Wait, so how I've dare never, you? I've never Blasphemy. enjoyed... Blasphemy. <laughs> So Apple Maps is what you're you're comparing Google That's Maps what I to. Use. I use good old Apple Maps. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I might in the near future. They made a big, huge improvement to it with the most recent ha, WWDC. Ha, ha, Nico. Did not allowed location denied camera contacts microphone storage. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got me through Google Maps, but also. All of the other Google services you use, every single one of them has good. those options too. So one of them might have fallen Name another cracks. one, Ren. Name another one. Google settings. Mm. Settings? What do you mean settings? I don't know. I'm, just, I'm making it up. I'm, <laughs> well, my point is that like... He was looking for Google's it Google's like fingers are so deep in the pie right now. Give me another right one. Because I deny. I deny, deny, deny. I, I do too. I, I always like try to not deny when I can. Um, <laughs> you can. Ah, oh, so many things. It's really kind of too bad. Like, you don't find success if you give up one or two years into it. It's not even enough time to go to college and get a degree, you know? <laughs> An <like>, associate. <laughs> that's about it. I think what's the saying is like most buildings fail, 80% of buildings fail two years in, then the, uh, the 80% of the rest of them fail five years in. Yeah, but what's that <laughs> What's that other, uh, what's that other phrase though where it's like... Early bird gets the worm? No, no. It's not <laughs> a phrase. Uh, it's, uh, more than it's a before. fallacy. Hmm. Like the sunk cost fallacy, I think. Oh, right. Where it's like, oh, we put in this much time. We should just at least see it through the, the end. The sunk cost like if, fallacy. Yeah, but if you actually take a step back and actually really kind of try to, you know, understand whether or not this is working, where it's going, and if you conclude that it's not going to go anywhere, there's no reason to continue. True, but I think here's the problem with applying a sunk cost fallacy to this. Is let's say let's say, so you're on top of a cliff and there's somebody at the bottom of the cliff. And you're like, I need to figure out a way to get you up here. Like, throw it on the rope. And you're like, okay. You throw it on the rope and like you're holding on to it, and they're climbing up the cliff. <clears throat> About the halfway up, they're like, "It's too slow." Sunk cost fallacy, and you let go of the rope while people are still holding on to it. <laughs> like that's that's what's happening with a lot of this stuff. Is like they want you, to launch a product and have thousands of people using it, and then to kill it two years into those people using it who have paid you money with an understanding. Like that's who starting pays to pays cr- Google money. Ask all those Pro Stadia subscribers. 
Pro Stadia. So wait, are they killing them and then just using like the same patents to go make another? No, they're just done. So they're just Who paid the patents Google? are done. No, they're not selling the patents. They might. They might. Well, they it's, must be making. It's money. more about the this the tools, the software, the things they've made. It's a little less about the patents and more about just putting. In the There's also a demand product. for all the developers and coders and yeah. engineers behind the scenes. They're like, we need you guys That's for true. something actually useful uh, that's not probably Google not Plus. a consideration <laughs> that we've made at this point so that's that's a significant consideration i think i you do know, think each product is you know if they have a team of developers behind them those products are burning cash yeah right. it's just if you do actually go through with launching a product that people have paid money for you need to put in more time than you initially want to to support those people that have been your customers and paid for this product or service that you've promised like you just you can't just stop the moment you stop making profit when people have had an exchange with you, you know? Like, if we have a business ar arrangement or a contract, and the, mom the moment I'm like, oh, this is tough. <laughs> like, I can't just walk <laughs> away right then, you know? Which is what, you know, I'm sure it's not that simple for these products, but in a way it also is because it's Google. I mean, they do have lots of resources. They do have money. Some of these things, like, for example, custom Google Maps. I had years worth of Boundary Waters trips I've done drawn on these maps mm. so i go back and revisit them and we have like you know little things marked and they just killed it and i was like well yeah, but nico you're you, you you're not part of a company that's trading uh 1641 billion market cap at two thousand dollars a share <laughs> wait one thousand you mean trillion they're, so yeah, trillion. They're one one point six trillion yeah. oh, oh one thousand billion trillion. gotcha gotcha yeah yeah yeah, you know, it's like when things cost money, what are you going to do? <laughs> Just have okay. a trillion dollars. <laughs> here's one Here's one uh, along the lines of our 800-pound gorilla theory. Neighborly. Mm. Neighborly was a mobile app designed to help you learn about your neighborhood by asking other residents. Uh, find out about local services and facilities in your area from people who live around you. Does that sound like anything else? <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> Next door? Yeah. yeah. There's a little like, let's shove us elbow our way in. <laughs> we'll call it neighborly. Imagine. So what? Sorry, go on. Imagine you're you're standing there on the nice bend of a beautiful river. You take out your canvas and you start painting this really great picture of this landscape. And somebody else comes in like, hi, I'm going to paint here too. I like your spot. And they sit up right next to you and start painting like, whoa. And they kind of push you out of the way and they kind of in front of you and they're in your field of view. And it's like, oh, cool. Thanks. Here's another one. Google, <laughs> Google TV. Oh, Google man. TV was the smart TV platform that integrated Android and Chrome. Oh, I remember that. Interactive television overlay. Freddie had a Google TV back in the day. It was actually really nice. And then I guess they just decided that being the front leading men on, or being being the front people on like a brand yeah. new technology is you're like, that's too hard. We want to copy other people, not <laughs> come up with it ourselves. What was the idea behind it? What would you do? It was smart just a smart TV. TV. It was a smart TV before yeah. smart TVs were a thing. And it was great. It worked wonderfully. You could pull up YouTube on it and like search stuff. It was really cool. It was before YouTube was actually on your TV. And then they just like, oh, we're just going to let everybody catch up to us and stop doing this. So what's the like, deal yeah, with the logistics of television just manufacturing? Is not, not, we're not going to do that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that makes sense to me. That's yeah. But like Stadia, like uh, mm. the streaming video game platform, everyone purchased it. You could buy the the controller it came with the subscription but you didn't come with the games you still had to buy the games <laughs> that but you i don't had heard <laughs> died like they canceled that it ended up going under but then i also hear that they're still focusing on it behind the scenes it's still actually alive and Stadia well is still around i would definitely not say it's alive and well it is still around yep it's like movie pass in the last couple of months i was like no everything's good Oh Please my don't God, try I to use it about though. Movie pass. <laughs> Dude, I bought yeah, a year. Yeah, nothing to see here. <laughs> I bought a year subscription to Movie Pass or a year's access. I that guess. Was bold. It was like ten bucks a month, so I just paid one hundred twenty bucks, and I was like, "All right, all I gotta do is go see at least ten movies, mm -hmm. and I will have made my money back." And I did. I watched ten movies over the course of a few months, and then I ended up not really. I ended up. I don't know. I. I didn't go for like eight months <laughs> and it, it canceled at the end of it. So it didn't like auto renew, which would have killed me. But yeah. And then ever since then, it just like, yeah, movie pass, just their offerings started getting worse and worse. Yeah, You couldn't go at certain times. You couldn't go to certain mm -hmm. theaters. It was but that great... was because AMC was like, they got their own pass. Movie pass is really just a precursor to the streaming platforms that we see now in a way. It's like, I'm not, I don't really want to pay 15 bucks a ticket to go to the theater and watch a Disney movie. I would rather just pay 15 bucks a month for Disney Plus. 
you know, and get the movies when they come out on Disney Plus. And you can still do the theater thing. Like, that's great. But, like, I feel like a company would also find it more valuable to have somebody subscribe for $15 a month. Because do you really go see a movie once a month? It's like, no. And of the $15 you spend, how much of that actually goes to the studio? I suppose. I mean, it really depends on the person. Definitely used to. All you dads are not going to be going to the (laughs) movie theaters once a month. Unless you're the kind of dad who needs to be able to get out of the house with your wife on a date night (laughs) at least once a month. I do feel like everybody... We're going to the movies, honey. (laughs) I do feel like everybody that bought a movie pass actually used it enough to make up for the cost of the movie pass, which is what killed them. Yeah, no, they were banking on everyone not doing that. Because <laughs> here, here's a pro tip for all you CEOs out there: if your business plan, to, your road to profit, is you banking on people not using your product, uh, you might have a flaw in your business plan. It's called, it's called a short sell, Nico. <laughs> <laughs> Some movie pass people subscribe; they'll use it for a month and they'll stop, and then we'll just keep making money once a month when they keep subscribing because they're not using it. It's like, what if people use it? It's like, no. Yeah. How do you feel then about? We'll close it. How do you feel about like say Disney charging like thirty bucks for a new movie that just drops instantly on? I their think platform? that's goofy. It's, it's weird, right? It's yeah. like people buy it, and and, yeah. and and it's like all right, again, it's the competition thing. They put up the money. Sure, I mean you could charge what you want. People are obviously paying for it, but I just can't imagine. It's a road to piracy, and Disney's playing uh, playing with fire if they keep doing that. I mean, yeah, but it's also an accessibility. That was whole. That was a uh, Gabe Newell's whole, whole thing from Steam. Or rather, Valve is that like piracy is just a a supply problem. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like if you can get the supply, people don't care about the cost. Mm. Uh, I mean, cost is part of the supply, but like if people for free can do a better job of distributing your thing digitally than you can, like then you're going to lose to piracy. Like that was the problem back in the day. If like there was no reason that these companies couldn't have streaming platforms for their movies outside of their convoluted, you know, licensing things Contracts. with TV sometimes. Yeah. But beyond that, like. If literally a kid in Scandinavia can rip your file and get it up on a torrent and make it accessible for anybody in the world to download the next day, and you're not doing that as a company, you are underserving your customers. Yeah, but torrenting stuff is a little harder than the average Joe is ready to do. (laughs) Eh, I don't know about that. (laughs) Not really. I don't know about that. (laughs) It's pretty easy. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, again, we're on my... a we're a futurism podcast here, so obviously <laughs> everyone listening can handle doing that sort of thing. But <laughs> think about how stupid most people are. Period. <laughs> like they're not going to be able to torrent anything. Being able to like they could barely get Disney Plus on their TV. They're not going to be pirating stuff. They're going to be like, oh, d- d- I guess I gotta pay my thirty bucks for Hang Mulan. On. <laughs> I saw the, I saw the funniest meme uh, the other day. It was like. It was some Indian politician, and he was, like, talking to the... I don't know if he was actually saying these words or if somebody dubbed it with text, but he's like, democracy is basically government by the people, for the people. The only problem is people are stupid. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's humankind in a nutshell, right? (laughs) Okay, here's here's another one. Here's another one. Google Clips. I actually don't know Google Clips. I'm going to guess okay. it's a video thing. Yes. Editing software. Google Clips was a clip-on camera that could oh. automatically capture interesting or relevant video clips determined by machine learning. I do remember that, actually. It it sounds kind of interesting. Oh, they're cool. They killed the Measure app for Android. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a great tool on the iPhone. I love it. Yeah. But I wouldn't be surprised if Apple kills it, too. Actually, no, Apple's pretty good about supporting things long beyond their usefulness. As long as they get their 30. Yeah, yeah. Man. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I like the, Apple. The devil needs his pound like of Apple flesh. Too. For my my only qualm against Apple is the thirty percent on the App Store. I think I'm not, now's the yeah. time for them to change that because when like Epic showed up, and it's weird that people are like so anti Epic games, like considering that Steam really could use some competition and it's good for everyone. Yeah, like the moment absolutely. Epic showed up, Steam lowered their uh, their cut. Yeah, their yeah. Epic's like we do we don't need to take thirty percent. Like, mm-hmm. we really technically don't need a lot of this money. We're making plenty of money on Fortnite, so we'll take 10% or 15%. And that seems like, uh, 20% is what we'll take, <laughs> not 30. Like, wonderful, awesome. Like, there's there's no way for that to happen on, a- on iOS, which Apple has made sure. I think it comes yeah. down to brand loyalty and how stubborn people are about it. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, and it's not even that they, they specifically really like this brand. It's that they're stubborn and it's all they, they know. It's all they've used. I've only ever used Steam. I've never used this new thing. I don't want this new thing. It's the worst thing. It's like yeah. it no just kind of raises up so quickly. No new things. No new <laughs> no things. New things. <laughs> As opposed to like taking a step back and understanding, oh, this competition is good for everyone. Even yeah. if I don't ever use it, I'm glad it exists because it makes 
the platform that I do want to use you have to kind of step up the game. It. It's the main reason mm -hmm. why I hate that there's no one wheel competition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, like Future Motion needs a competitor so that everyone succeeds. But they're living so. out that they're living that 14 year uh, patent high. Yeah, they're they're right they're now. riding that patent wave. Riding yeah. that patent wave. All now, right, don't get me wrong. I love me some Future Motion. But I would love me another one wheel. I would love me a better one wheel. <laughs> yeah. Snap. Look, our, brand, our, our loyalty is fickle. <laughs> he, uh, here's one I bet they wish they didn't get rid of. Google flu trends. Mm. Okay, this, this one mm. allowed you to... Interesting. Uh, Google flu trends was a service attempting to make accurate predictions about flu activity. Hmm. Um, yeah, they should bring that back. That that would have been a, uh, pretty useful about uh, eighteen months ago. <laughs> yeah, they they canned that along with the whole uh, pandemic preparedness group at the government. So you know, <laughs> it's like it's gone. I, I never use my seatbelt. Why would I even? Need, it's never like I've never had to use my airbags. Why would I put them in my car? I've never been in a car accident. So why do I need airbags? This is stupid. <laughs> Like, right. I'm good enough to not need seatbelts. It's like, oh, yeah, race car drivers don't wear seatbelts. <laughs> right? That's how it works? That's that, Yeah, that's how it works. They don't have I mean, five straps covering their body. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a seatbelt. Yeah, that's a that's a harness. <laughs> race car drivers do not use seatbelts. That's true. They use harnesses. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Google Reader. Hey, what does that one sound like? Sounds like a Kindle? Maybe? Google re Wait, I thought it was a competitor to uh, PDF Reader. Oh. No, it was Our an Google RSS Atom feed aggregator operated by Google. Remember when oh, it was all about RSS feeds? Yeah, I, those, never, I never used RSS Neither feeds. Neither did I, because it just seems like, you mean, just a conglomeration of blog posts? Well, funny enough, that's that's how we distribute this podcast when it's not on YouTube is via RSS feed. <laughs> it must, must be a thing where, like, you know, the techie that's people how you behind distribute the scenes... All that's how you distribute all podcasts still is even if you're using a service, you still need that. That service will create an RSS feed for you. So it ended up being more of a behind the scenes infrastructure thing than like a customer facing. Yeah. Feature. Yeah. It's very much an infrastructural thing. Hmm. YouTube video editor was killed. Yep. Wow. That's weird. So it's like on one hand, TikTok goes ahead and makes editing videos really accessible and easy and as a platform blow up because people can make more content. Yeah. And then uh, YouTube's like, no. <laughs> so, I mean. What if we didn't? <laughs> Part of me really wants to talk about TikTok right now. Do right. it. I have five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Nico really wants to not talk about TikTok. <laughs> no, talk about TikTok. I would love to talk about TikTok. Well, no, okay. So it's like, it, it, I, I've been using TikTok a little bit over the last couple of months. Uh, not as much as Jenna. She's gotten really into it, and and I think everyone who uses it kind of understands the the black hole nature of TikTok. It's like you get sucked in, and it's like, wow, this is actually a pretty good video. And then like you go to the next one, wow, this is also actually a surprisingly good video. And I might end up rehashing some of our conversation we had literally yesterday. <laughs> but uh, the way I see it is that TikTok is more than just like a social media platform. They actually nailed making a really good video editor mm -hmm. because on your phone. Yeah, they made being able to simply just edit a bunch of clips together, add sound, add music, add little extra pieces to it, be creative with it. They made the act of doing that really, really easy. They have a green screen feature. Yeah, and so because of that, you have all of these people who maybe would never have, or sorry, you have all of these very creative people who maybe lacked the technical uh, knowledge or skill set to be able to use like an editing program on a computer or even have access to a computer potentially. Yeah. These are all people now Absolutely. that are like, oh, I have, I'm actually a really clever person. I'm actually a really funny person. And they're able to now make really funny and creative videos just using their phone. And TikTok is an editing program that has allowed that to happen. You know, and that's something that I've never really ever tried you doing before in my life it's like anytime i want to put up a video i'll you know open up my editing program maybe even an effects software like throw something together and upload it uh to these well, programs how do you think it's blown up so largely globally so that's you one know, part of it one part of it is the fact that now that. we're seeing uh excellent content now you know all all of these people like the the cream of the crop is really rising up and so you're actually getting on the one hand, really, really good content out there, uh, more so than I think uh, any of us here have really realized. 
And secondly, I think their algorithm is just so scary good at identifying who you are and what your interests are, which goes back to perhaps some problematic uh, morals. But, uh, you know, eh. It's it's they, eh, that's they, what you have they, to say about that is no, eh? no, no I mean I'm just saying it's like they figure you out and at the end of the day it's like you're you're you continue to look at it and the more you look the more they know who you are uh yeah, yeah do you think so that's good for humanity that's a question I don't think I'm capable of answering <laughs> have you guys watched the new Bo Burnham uh, I started watching it but my wife wanted to stop watching it so we stopped watching it nice oh is Your it because wife she was too busy watching, watching one of the TikTok? most amazing <laughs> creations we got we got like 15 20 minutes in i was enjoying it i think it's pretty good but it just wasn't the vibe for a night i think fair enough fair enough the movie is only movie she was watching tiktok videos wasn't she that's why she didn't want to watch it maybe (laughs) (laughs) um in all honesty uh everybody should definitely check it out it's great one dude by himself films and shoots and acts and does it I love, All on his I own. love Bo Burnham. He is yeah. an incredible individual. He is also an OG YouTuber. Hmm. Started up on YouTube, you know, 12, 13 years ago. Uh, yeah. You know, there's a, there's, a, there's a crew of like a dozen creators from like the late 2000s, 2008 era who... They, Lonely Island is kind of in that realm too. I mean, kind of. Lonely Island was earlier. SNL. Well, before SNL, they were uh, Channel 101. Mm-hmm. Okay, sure, but... The idea of like, you know, okay, you're a funny person, you're a creative person, but no one is helping you. You got to, you know, do it yourself. Mm -hmm. And YouTube was amazing for that. YouTube literally created a bit of a cultural revolution in that regard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we kind of don't really see as much of that these days. It's so huge. There's so much noise. Um, You know, there's so much corporate money uh, all over the place. It's kind of hard to tell what is or isn't a single person doing it all. But Bo Burnham is a single guy. And it, I, I, it really shines through in his special, the fact mm. that it's just him doing all of it. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty amazing stuff. And like... From what I've seen, I should yeah. say. Yeah. <laughs> the way, I mean, it's really funny. It's really entertaining. It's insightful in many ways. It's it's exactly... Mike, my buddy Mike put it really well, right? He thinks it's the, the best creation to have come out of the, the pandemic in terms of like the art and the, the mm-hmm. media that was created during the pandemic. Like that's the one that like captures that moment uh in a really i guess poignant way poignant yeah 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 oberdom's inside on netflix go check it out okay it's yeah so i, I want to finish it i do want to finish it his uh song about the internet it's uh could i interest you in a little bit of everything all of the time <laughs> <laughs> and, like how that's just like heroin you know and just like and it's mainlined into you and like it started with, you know, kids like two years old, they get good at using an iPad and like now they're like eight, nine, 10, 11 years old and TikTok's a thing. It's like, it's just that. It's like main lighted into my arteries, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the Do you data. guys have that sort of like internal debate where you're like, I want my kid to not have that sort of mental highway to this stuff, but also I don't want them to be non-competitive later in life. Mm. I think there's a pretty big difference between letting your kid click on thumbnails on YouTube until they get tired of clicking on thumbnails and say, you know, understanding other human experiences aside from their own and how yeah. to use computers. I hear you. Yeah. Like we don't, yeah. we don't let Milo have, we don't let her hold the phone. Okay. And we only play, currently we only play uh, music videos by the Okie Doki brothers <laughs> where they sing about like dogs and horses <laughs> and like ABC songs from only like Sesame Street or ABC Mouse. Like, okay. Those are the yeah. only things we play for her. She gets she gets like 25 to 30 minutes a day at most of like screen time. Uh-huh. And beyond like and we're always in control of it cuz we did for a moment like, you know, she would just watch video on the phone, but then it's like, "Oh, I swipe up. There's thumbnails, there's pictures." Oh, I clicked on one, a new video. Yeah, they they <gasps> figure more. that Click out on at about video. 18 months. They figure yeah. that out. And that's yeah. where it's like, huh. can't let her just go through it. And of course, then the ads start playing and like now my like, you know, two year old daughter is seeing ads and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, I don't want any of that. You can maybe try something where it's like you can put on uh, some, I don't know. I, f- I feel like you can maybe connect a phone to a second display that's not a touch screen, perhaps. We, we do that. We, okay. we just cast it to our TV, for example. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, uh, the, you know, the thing is like, and this is something people talk about, like, well, when you're raising a kid, it's important for a kid to be able to understand how to deal with pain. Because you're going to have pain in your life, you know, and it starts with a, a kid learning how to calm themselves down once they are crying, because that's not a thing that you can just do. Like you're crying and you're just crying, crying, crying. 
It's like you need to learn how to take control of that, chill out, take a breath, and get over that natural reflex, right? Okay. Uh, same thing, like you need to learn how to fall asleep. You need to learn how to do these things that are important things to learn in life. And you only learn how to calm yourself down if no one else calms you down. Mm. If every time you get upset, someone else calms you down, then you are not equipped with the tools to handle that. Likewise with pain. If the first time you're feeling pain is when you're 25 years old, you're going to have a really tough time dealing with it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like you need to, you need to learn that when you trip, it hurts. You need to learn mm -hmm. that when you do something goofy, sometimes you cross the line and you fall over and you hurt yourself. Like, Oh, I got you, that lesson down. Yeah. And when you do hurt yourself, <laughs> you need to learn how to deal with it. And it's not just pain in terms of like, I stubbed my toe, but there's emotional pains. There's frustrations. There's, oh, my hand's stuck. There's, I can't figure this out. Like we have all these different types of pains in our life. And you know, when you're raising a child, they need to experience those pains and then they need to be learn how to deal with and handle those pains on their own. So one of the pains that we all encounter is boredom. Mm. And if you are conditioned to never have to experience that pain, then you freak out when you get bored and you don't have right. access to the yep. thing, you know, your yeah. little morphine drip of the internet. And through boredom comes things like inspiration, thought, reflection, quiet, solitude, zen, meditation, like yeah. you sleep like you need to have boredom you need to be comfortable with it you need to know how to deal with it and turn inwards for example or find something else to do or motivate yourself to do something else and you can kill all of those muscles if every time you're bored you immediately pull out your phone yeah. and especially if you're two years old when it happens so yeah i find myself Good doing point. that a well lot put. like even if you just say waiting outside your friend's apartment to open up the gate and you just whip it out and you have yeah. literally nothing to do you're just mm -hmm. scrolling or you see mm -hmm. someone coming down the street and you pull out your phone so you don't have to make eye contact. It's no, notice 100%, that how many times, 100%. notice how many times you're in public and you, you're like in a waiting area or you're around, you, you, you're around a stranger. I, I, over the last few years, I've just, I've noticed that so significantly because the, the first thing that most people do, not everybody does it, but first thing people do is they pull out their phone. Mm -hmm. It's like, <laughs> I mean, same for me, like the moment yeah. I have to wait my phone appears out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Same. <clears throat> Same. Yep. And now but, you don't talk to each other. You don't, yeah. you know. I've definitely made it a habit when I'm walking around Glendale. I keep my phone in my pocket and I will purposely go like, hi, how are you? Even <laughs> if they don't look at me because people are yeah. like, what's I mean, I enjoy that too, yeah. Human That's contact. Yeah. But like when I grew up, I grew up like right on the cusp of like, you talk to people, you play outside, and then like, bam, the internet came. Mm -hmm. And then I had to even learn about the internet. But I miss it. I, I, I watch it so many times. I'm, I'm driving and I see someone just waiting and they just pull out their phone and they're just, you just even swiping through their apps. And I'm like, there's this whole world that you yeah. could be looking at. When I was a connecting. kid, we would yeah. go on these road trips every summer. My dad would bank all of his year's vacation <laughs> and we would spend it all over like two or three weeks. Uh, nice. And later on, when he got more vacation, we would take an entire month off and we'd go on these long road trips from like Louisiana where I was living up to say like the tip of Maine or up to the tip of Washington. And we'd take an entire month just camping every night and just driving the whole way. And so my sister and I spent so much time sitting in the back of a truck doing nothing, <laughs> nothing. Oh my God, we, we, play, we played our Tamagotchi to the point that they broke. And that was, that was a treat because the year prior we didn't have anything. Uh, and then like, I think the year after that we finally got like Game Boys and that was, that yeah. was a big deal. But like, you know, a Game Boy isn't gonna last you a full days of driving in the back. You still spend a significant amount of time yeah. just sitting there staring out the window, looking at, I ended up coming up with like an imaginary friend a little bit who was the cornfields. Whenever you're driving by a cornfield, if you look at them, they have like these little legs that are running by. Yeah. And he was my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you would have never made that friend if you had yeah. TikTok on Maybe not cornfields, but definitely like sugarcane fields mm. or any sort of like, you know, rows yeah. of fields. Yeah. Your imagination definitely does just keep going. Mm -hmm. You're in your thoughts rather than in a screen. Yeah. That was actually when I started doing my earliest consideration of parallax. Hmm. I really started thinking a lot about parallax. I didn't know what it was at the time, but I just remember thinking like, why are the things in the distance moving slower yeah. than the things in the uh, foreground? Same, same. Yeah. I remember, yeah, 100%. <laughs> yeah. Alas. Wow. Okay. That's, there you have it. Does that mean deep at the end there? That was great. Oh. Uh, I'm down for these philosophical questions. Remember, futurism, futurology, I don't know which term it is. <laughs> but, leave, leave a comment down below maybe we already asked this question maybe there's already a comment down below in a previous yeah. video we just didn't see it but right. i'd love to hear people's thoughts on what we talk about too i love reading the comments in the podcast they're always like a little deeper mm -hmm. a little like more thought out like 
you know, actual discussion. It's really nice. I think this this podcast may have been a little bit more on the depressing side. We're just talking about a bunch of dead <laughs> products. <laughs> well, I better play a D minor then. Yeah. <laughs> All Full right. circle. Take us out, Jake. If you're driving through a cornfield and you're thinking about parallax, <laughs> <laughs> is it on your phone or is it in all the mirrors or is it out the windows? I don't know. And is this a futurology or a futurist podcast? Let us know. And get them deep cuts in the comments, ladies and gentlemen, because that's where it's at. Thank you for watching croutons croutons and uh we'll catch you guys here next week yeah thanks so for listening everybody. everyone three two one 